Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm your host, Jim Dempsey. Well, we are rapidly moving through the month of December. We're starting to move into uh, the second week of December and we are really starting to ratchet up everything that we're doing at year end. It seems to be one of the busiest time of the years. If it isn't for you, it definitely is for me. But uh, I, it would seem to me that with all the activities and programs, whether it be open house, Christmas party, whether it be year end appeal letters, calling, visiting, this really seems to be a very, very busy time of the year. And so I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm going to continue to produce videos all the way through December 31st. And I've got some terrific topics we're going to cover. We're going to talk about giving of business interests or portions of business interests. We're going to talk about the current economic situation and how that will impact year-end giving. We're also going to talk about what to do in the last week of the month. And then we're also going to address how to work and how to encourage your staff at year end. So it's a busy month and I'm gonna be here for you. If you aren't already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of every one of those videos in the month of December. And I've got a playlist that's out there on YouTube as well too. Make sure that you look for the fully funded in 2022 year end playlist. And I'm hoping that will bless you and that you'll really, really see a benefit of that. So let's dive into our question of the day. Our question of the day is from Becky in Ottumwa, Iowa. And Becky asks, I live in a small community. It's not easy getting people to come to our fundraising events. What do you suggest? Well, Becky, thank you so much. I appreciate not only the large organizations that follow me on YouTube, on this channel. I'm also so appreciative of the smaller organizations and not only those organizations that are in big cities, but in small communities. And Becky, small communities definitely can be, uh, can have their own challenges and uniquenesses. Whereas in big cities, I often just take for granted the number of facilities, the size of the ballroom, their ability to put on a, an event that's not catered. But when we start to move into small towns and small communities, I know it is so much more challenging. I remember doing a dinner uh, about a decade ago in a small town in South Carolina and the only place that they had to have a dinner of any size was in an old theater that they had just taken out all the seats, kept the stage there, but that it was essentially a, a open space with tables on the inside. And that was the only choice that we had. And believe it or not, we still had a very good event in, an, in, in, in as far as number of people attending and the results. So that was really great. Now, Becky, how do we get to the point where in small towns you start to get more people there? Becky, the key to any successful event, in my mind, is recruitment of table hosts. And I don't mean recruitment through selling tickets and selling tables. When I talk about recruitment of table hosts, I am asking our table hosts to fill a table of 10. Now that doesn't mean because we're not asking them to buy a table that all their responsibility is, is to find people for their table. We want them to find good qualified people who are, are going to be at their table and are gonna be givers at the event. So generally what I say to the table host is that we want someone who has a heart for your, the, the kinds of things that your organization exists to accomplish, a heart for your mission, vision, and values. Number two, has a heart for the particular focus that you have. And number three, is at least willing to consider an opportunity to give to your organization. We're not asking the table host to pre-qualify them from 
asking, will you give a gift of $1,000 or will you give a gift of $500? But we are asking them to t talk, to have a conversation with the people at the table and let them know we're going to be talking about money. We're going to be giving you an opportunity to give. And so we would like for you to come prepared and at least consider an opportunity to give. No event that you do should be ever considered a bait and switch event. You do not want to get people there and just surprise them with the opportunity to give. You want to make sure that they are fully prepared and ready with credit card, check, whatever, to give to your organization that night. Our responsibility is get them to a higher level of giving. They may walk in thinking about a certain amount. I want to get them to a higher giving amount, even a sacrificial gift, if that's at all possible. But the key to success is getting the right people in the seats. And that is the sole responsibility of the table host. This is not individuals giving you names and you call those people and ask them to be hosts. This is individuals who are part of your organization, board members, staff, other long-time volunteers of your organization who are challenging their friends to become table hosts and those table hosts are asking their friends. I always say that to try and get a hundred people to an event, you could ask, you could call a hundred people on your mailing list and ask them to come, but you're better off to find 10 people who fill 10 seats at each table and get those people to invite their friends. You're going to get in new circles of influence, new pockets of partners, and you're going to be uh, making sure that you continue to grow your event every year as a result of being able to tap into those pool of people and new a new pool of people every year as you invite more and more people. And be sure the following year to ask the table hosts that were in there the year before, ask them to consider inviting one person at their table from the prior year to be a table host. That is how you multiply your dinner. Just getting the same people coming back every year, it, all that is is replication. You want to look for multiplication. And multiplication means that you continue to break up a table every year and get those people to be table hosts and bringing their friends. So, Becky, I hope that helped. With that, I am here to help you with any of the challenges or concerns that you might have, you can reach me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. You can also reach me out on Instagram and follow me for helpful tips at Jim W. Dempsey and reach out on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java and be sure to make sure that you are subscribing to this channel. And please, we would love to grow our Life Changers Facebook group. If you're not following us on Facebook in our Life Changers group, please do so today. And as I always say, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.